Good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend, and thank you for being here uh, this morning. Uh, go ahead and let's uh, turn back to the 32nd Psalm. We'll be picking up there in the 8th verse today, the 32nd Psalm, 8th verse. And David has been um, talking about the joy uh, of forgiveness, and then he gave us a... Um, four steps uh, in how to avoid uh, recurring sin. And now we're going to pick up uh, again in verse 8. And there's a little bit of, not really controversy, but discussion, I guess, exactly who is speaking here. Uh, if you look at verse 8, <clears throat> you notice it says, I will instruct thee uh, in the ways you should go. I will guide thee. Um, and so who is the I? Uh, in, uh, in in that verse is David saying that he will instruct um, and he will guide or is uh, someone else uh, speaking there. Uh, there's nothing in the psalm itself that indicates that um, that there's been a change of speaker, that it's anyone um, other uh, than David, uh, that at this point, uh, David is uh, taking on um, the, the role uh, of a teacher who has learned uh, from his mistakes. And he says, I will teach you. Uh, I will guide you. Um, however, um, most people, uh, when they look at this, think that at this point, the speaker actually shifts. Uh, and if you, if you back up, I don't know why I was about to point at my screen again. I do that all the time. Um, in verse 7, David is saying, Thou art my hiding place. Thou preserve me. Thou compass me about with songs of deliverance. Uh, that's David saying that. And then verse 8 uh, begins uh, God's answer uh, or response to what David uh, has, uh, has said uh, in these uh, previous uh, verses in particular, uh, again, verse 7, when he is directly addressing God, you uh, are my hiding place. You will preserve me. You will compass me about. And so then in verse 8, uh, God responds and says, I will instruct thee. Um, and if um, if you're asking my opinion, uh, which my opinion and a dollar will get you, you know, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, maybe, um, is that that is what's happened here, that this is not David taking on the role. Uh, I don't think at this point uh, David has been humbled by his sin, by his uh, by conviction. Uh, I don't think David is stepping up now saying, all right, now I'll teach you. Uh, I think God is responding to David when David says, I, you're my hiding place, preserve me, compass me about. God responds. These are the words of David. God is speaking through David uh, to any uh, who will um, who will pray that prayer, uh, who, who will pray and, and trust God as their hiding place, uh, then God responds and says, okay, this is what I will do. Uh, I will instruct thee, teach thee uh, in the way thou shalt go. Uh, and so that's the way I'm going to uh, approach it and, and uh, discuss it this morning is that this is now uh, God responding and uh, talking uh, to anyone, not just David, but to anyone uh, who is willing uh, to, to listen uh, and to commit himself <clears throat> uh, to following God. And so God promises then, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way uh, which thou shall go. Uh, and so uh, he is uh, doing uh, just um, what uh, he, he has asked, uh, uh, what he has uh, prayed uh, for us to do. He says, I will guide thee with mine eye. Um, and um, when I hear that phrase, uh, what I think about it, and if you've ever, you've probably seen this happen sometimes, you can, uh, how you can guide someone with your eye. Uh, if you're wanting, and I don't know how well to come across uh, the camera uh, this morning, but uh, you know, if you're wanting someone to move, you know, over there, you might kind of, you know, 
give them the you know kind of the 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 eye look or uh, you know maybe the other one um, you know what I call the stink eye. Uh, you know if you got a child that's misbehaving, you might give you know give them the stink eye. Um, you know you you guide them with your eye. Well, uh, I, and I think you know again you we've probably all. Uh, done that and been the recipient of that, uh, someone guiding us with their eyes. Um, the one thing that is an absolute requirement <clears throat> to be guided by someone's eyes, um, again, th th you know, this morning is a good example. It's very difficult to do uh, over uh, the camera. It's difficult, to, it's almost impossible to do uh, from more uh, than just a few feet away. Uh, and so if, if God is going to guide us with his eye, uh, then that naturally implies that, uh, that we are close to God, that we have, uh, again, a close walk with him. And so, uh, again, which builds on what David had said uh, in verse 7, you're my hiding place. I'm going to be uh, up, uh, up close to you. Uh, you can't guide someone with your eye who is a, uh, who is a long distance away. And so God is promising us here and saying that if we will make this commitment uh, that David uh, has made, uh, beginning in verse 6, uh, that the godly pray um, and he's your hiding place and preserve you and praise him with song, uh, then he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you go. I'll guide you uh, with mine eye. And he has uh, taught us and instructed us in many ways. Uh, we have um, obviously the Word of God in front of us. Uh, we have uh, 66 books of God's way, uh, 66 way, 66 books of his guidance uh, for us to follow. Uh, we have uh, his leadership uh, in, uh, in our life. We know that uh, this phrase, again, I'll guide you with mine eye, that his eye uh, is always uh, watching us, that he sees the sparrow when it falls. He knows the number uh, of hairs on our head. And, and so we have this promise that when we commit to him, uh, he commits back. Uh, it's not a one-way street. If we will commit ourselves, he says, then I will uh, instruct you and teach you uh, in the way uh, that you uh, should go. And then he kind of gives a, a warning here uh, in, uh, in verse 9 uh, when he says, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near uh, unto you. Uh, and as I look at that statement, don't be like the horse or as the mule. Uh, I think about the difference in a, in a horse or a mule. Uh, a horse, typically, uh, the very nature uh, of a horse, the very character of a horse uh, is to run away from you. Uh, you, you see, you know, we've got uh, here in North Carolina out on the Outer Banks, we've got those uh, wild horses that are out there. Uh, it is the nature of a horse to run away. Uh, it's the nature of a mule to not move. And so uh, I think that's a pretty cool picture he gives us there when he tells us don't be like the horse or the mule. Uh, no, don't run away and don't be too stubborn uh, to move. Uh, don't be like uh, either one of them who has to have a, uh, a bit put in their mouth and be controlled uh, that way, that God uh, wants us to, um, to have enough uh, commitment, enough dedication to him uh, to follow him uh, without having to be um, guided by a bridle and bit. Uh, and so he's gives us a, a really neat, uh, I think, uh, again, uh, illustration here that don't be like the horse or the mule. Uh, don't be like either one of them. Uh, don't be like a, a horse that's got to be uh, tamed and brought under control. Uh, don't be like a, a mule uh, that's too stubborn to move uh, when, when God says uh, to move. Um, and uh, I think about David's situation 
uh, maybe, uh, and this may not be a real good example, but I think David has kind of exemplified a little bit of both of these. Uh, he started out uh, in his sin with Bathsheba as a mule, uh, kind of stubborn, determined uh, to do what he had set his heart to do. Um, that uh, he had set his heart to, to sin, to commit adultery with Bathsheba. Uh, then he set his heart to uh, to uh, to cover it up by the murder of her husband, uh, and so he was just steadfast in, in having his way. He was a stubborn mule uh, when it come to that. And then after that sin, for the next year, he was kind of like a horse. Uh, he he was running away, trying to hide. Uh, and so God has given us this uh, this uh, this reminder. Um, and so. What he's telling us here very simply uh, is that God has given us what we need uh, to, to serve him. Um, he has given us his word. He guides us uh, with his spirit, uh, you know, his, his spirit in us that uh, speaks to us and guides us and tells us uh, which way uh, that we should go, the things we should uh, and, and should not do. Uh, and so we, again, and we can't disconnect these two verses from the previous two verses uh, that talked about uh, praying and uh, praising and committing ourselves to him. He says when we do that, he says here is the response. Uh, when we do that, uh, when we make that commitment, then I make this commitment back to you, uh, that I will guide you and I will lead you, I will direct you uh, in the way you should go. Just don't be uh, like a horse or a mule. And so uh, this morning, that's uh, something I think for us uh, pretty, uh, pretty heavy to chew on for a moment, uh, to contemplate in our day. Uh, in, when somebody asks you today, uh, when they look at you, say, what are you thinking about? And you say, well, I'm trying to decide if I'm a horse or a mule. Uh, which one are we? Are we, we stubborn and, and won't be moved? Uh, or are we running away uh, from God and his direction in our life? Uh, and so uh, God's offering to guide us. He's offering to lead us. Uh, we just have to be willing to commit to following him uh, without having to be uh, the bit and bridle uh, put in our mouth that he wants us to follow him uh, out of our love for him and our devotion to him. All right, I hope that uh, gives you something to think about today. I hope that'll, uh, again, you go around today trying to decide if you're a horse or a mule. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I think most of the time I'm more a mule. Uh, I think I'm more stubborn, and uh, I think most of us, if we're honest, would probably say that. Uh, but either way, God says, don't be like the horse or the mule. Just simply uh, follow him uh, in all the ways of your life. All right. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you back here uh, first thing in the morning.